bring up any body. So just like we did in the tank top demo, you can bring in a tool, you can grab Nick Z's mesh, you can grab the Julie mesh, uh, whatever you want to do. I'm going to bring in this female full, bo full body I have, and the light box is a comma key, by the way. And we can drag this body out, go into edit mode, and now we have a tool we can work with. I'm going to open up the subtool menu here. And again, just like the tank top demo from the earlier video, we're going to go in here to the comma key. We're going to go into spotlight. We're going to double click this 256 clothing. Uh, again, if you're working on a small resolution like I am, 1920 by 1080, you can double click your divider and you can see this stuff. Or, and or, you can hit Z for spotlight to bring that up. Uh, just tap in your document to unselect all of these or deselect all these. I'm going to move this over just by clicking in this area around the orange circle. Just move this over, then I can open back up by double clicking this double divider to bring open this menu. Uh, we're going to be doing with dynamic simulations. So we're going to click this little white dot in here to get rid of the brush menu. Then we're going to open the dynamic menu, grab that white dot, and just drag it right on over here. So uh, let's go ahead and move this back over to the corner. And we want to put a dress uh, on our female. So again, quick spotlight functionality. Uh, again, if you want to know more about that, my YouTube channel in ZBrush 2019, what's new is going to have a bunch of spotlight stuff. Same thing on my ArtStation page, ZBrush 2019, what's new. Click up here, scroll down, and you'll see a bunch of new spotlight functionality uh, that you can explore. But just quick overview, this outer ring will move around these objects. And if you go and select one, like, okay, we want to try on a dress, I can grab one of these dresses. I can pull it over here to the middle. I can use this scale to go ahead and scale it up. Just click and drag on the widget to scale the dress up. I can take this opacity, just click and drag to the left to drop that opacity down so we can see a little bit better. If we tap Z, that goes, uh, it leaves the spotlight open, but also allows me to move my object in the back here so we can go ahead and position our body. We can hit Z to bring the widget back and then we can move this thing around by clicking, having it selected. If it's not selected, it just turns blank and then you just move everything around. Uh, if you want to select this one specifically, it turns orange around the outer border and then now you can move it. You can move the widget by just clicking and dragging that orange circle and kind of reposition it and that's going to be you know where it scales from is basically your pivot point or rotates or whatever you're doing. And another cool thing is if you want to try on different outfits, go over here to this quick select and then you just go and tap over here and you can try on you know different fits and see which one might work uh, for what you're going for. So I'm going to say in between these two probably, let's go ahead and take this one. And this dress is a little bit big, so what we're going to do is we're going to scale this down a little bit and move it on over. I think that'll fit just about right. So we're going to go ahead and right here down at the very bottom there's a snapshot 3D. Again, if you're familiar with the 2019 functionality, you'll know more about that. Go do a deep dive on that playlist. But we're just going to click that button. That's going to give us geometry. We're going to hit Shift Z to turn off spotlight. So shift Z to turn it off, Z to bring it back, Z to go out of widget mode, and then uh, Z to bring it back, and then shift Z to turn it off. So now we have a dress on our object here. So I'm gonna go uh, turn on this little colorized little paintbrush over here in the subtool menu, and you're gonna see uh, there's red areas. Those are polygrouped painted areas now, so which makes it really handy because I can go over here and hold down control shift and tap that painted area, and that's going to isolate just those areas which we kinda wanna get rid of. We want our body parts to come through those areas, so we don't want clothing there. So I'm gonna hold down control shift and drag. That's gonna invert my visibility selection. Uh, again, if you wanna know more of the basics about modifiers and stuff like that, please go in here to the ZBrush for Ideation. There's 56 videos in here to get you caught up. Same thing on my YouTube channel, ZBrush for Ideation. Go check those out. So now that those aren't seen, you can go down here to your geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. If you don't like digging through those menus, set up your own custom UI also in that ZBrush for Ideation playlist. And we're good to go. So now all we need to do is tell ZBrush, I have my cloth subtool selected, and anything else that's visible in my scene, I want to be a collision mesh. So just come over here under dynamics, turn on collision volume. We can go ahead and crank this collision volume up, uh, make sure we get a nice clean result. We're going to go more into the specifics of collision volume and how it works in later videos, but for now, we'll just go ahead and crank that up. Now to get this body to stick to the mesh just like we did for the tank top demo, we're going to turn off gravity because I don't want it pulling on the cloth, I just want it contracting onto the body. And when we're contracting, if we turn on the floor, again, this green line here, Y is positive, positive Y is up, negative Y is down. This little red line here, negative X is to the left, positive X is to the right. Z forward is Z positive, this blue line backwards is Z negative. And what I want to do is in that Z direction, basically forward and backward, I want to bring these this back part and this forward part together onto the body, negative and positive Z. So that's going to be contract, we're going to contract this cloth 
in the, not in the x, not in the y, so go ahead and turn those off, but in the z direction. So with gravity off, contract on, collision volume on, run the simulation, and now the dress will go ahead and snap to her body. If it's having a little bit of a problem, like if the straps uh, don't have enough information, what you can do really quickly is go in here to B, Z, M, that's your Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, hold down the space bar and say insert multiple edge loops, and then just click and drag on one of those edges. And we'll just go ahead and add some resolution over here. Uh, if you want to do it on both sides, hit X to go across X symmetry. Again, that's transform X, X symmetry, just tap X to toggle that on and off. So we'll toggle it on, and now we can add more resolution in here which should help the simulation out. And then now when we run the simulation, it should be able to grab uh, more verts there. Because previously, there was nothing for that simulation to grab. It was just kind of, you know, had a point over here and a point over here, and it was just disappearing into the body. So now this fits uh, nicely to the body here. And if you want to stop the simulation, just click in your document, hit escape, tap the button again, or hit spacebar. Now you're gonna see when we go in here, let's go and turn on uh, Skin Shader 4 so you can see it. Uh, you can see there's a big air pocket around the dress and her body. That's going to be this in collision volume inflate over here. Let's go ahead and turn that down to zero, rerun the simulation, and now that cloth is going to stick very close to her body. Now, depending on the resolution of your geometry, uh, it could start, you know, interpenetrating the mesh. What we can do, new functionality in 2021, we can go over here and we can say geometry dynamic subdiv, go ahead and turn that on. Uh, by default, what it's gonna do is give you a preview of what it would look like if you subdivided it twice. That's what the smooth subdiv of two means over here. Uh, if you turn that down to zero, this is your actual geometry. What we're gonna look at is this thickness. So we can turn this thickness up and that's gonna go ahead and add uh, some dynamic thickness. If we go into solo mode here, your solo mode button might be down here, but click on that solo button. Now you're gonna see if we turn dynamic off and then on again, you're gonna see it gets thicker. Now it's getting thicker in two directions. It's kind of puffing out this way and puffing in that way. Uh, that's gonna be handled by this offset value. If I go to 100, the original mesh is gonna be on the interior, so closest to the skin, and then the dynamic is just gonna push outwards from that point. If I go to negative 100, the original mesh is going to be this outside mesh, and then the dynamic is just going to push in uh, a new mesh on the inside. And again, this is just, this isn't real mesh, this is just a preview mesh for you to kind of uh, use to your advantage later. Now you can see over here where the geometry is kind of crummy. Uh, you can go over here to the smoothness, and you can kind of turn this up, and that may alleviate uh, some of that stress over there. But we're also going to clean this uh, geometry up as well. Uh, or if you want to split the difference on that thickness, just put it at zero, and now it'll kind of go in a little bit and go out a little bit uh, from a midpoint. So here we go, we have a dress. And let's go ahead and clean this geometry up a little bit. So I'm going to turn off dynamic, and I'm going to go with solo mode, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn off colorize. I don't need to see, uh, if we turn off polyframe here, uh, I don't need to see that red anymore. So now we just have our simulated dress here, and you can see again, these edges is pretty raggedy. So we can go down here to deformation and we can just do it a polish by features. Now right now we do have features. A feature is a crease and or uh, a polygroup uh, border. In this case it, I don't need to keep my front and my back. You can if you want to. I'm just going to hit control W to make this all one polygroup. That gets rid of my features and then I can do a polish by feature and just get a nice polished result. You can also go up here to polish uh, open circle or closed circle and get the same result. And if you have details on here you don't want to get rid of and you just want to clean up these borders, go in here to your masking menu, mask by open border. Uh, you can grow that mask if you want to. You can uh, invert that mask or you can control click in your document to invert it. And then go back up here, you can run that polish or you can run that polish by feature and you can see it's gonna clean up that edge very nicely. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to get new geometry. It's not terrible, um, but it's also not great in some areas. So before I do that, I'm going to go through here, let's go out of solo mode, and I'm going to hit, I turn off a line cursor to surface just so the little preview cursor isn't always flopping around. So under preferences, edit, I can turn off a line cursor to surface. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to move these points around as needed. So if I want to thicken this dress strap up, I can, or if I, if I want to, I can go to my pinch brush, B, P, I, and I can just like run my brush along here and I can thin these straps up if I want. Now you may be saying that's not colliding with the geometry. There's actually a way around that. You can go into, I'm skipping ahead here, but you can go in here to brush 
elasticity and you can turn simulation iterations and that'll allow that brush to work and run and uh, calculate your collision volume at the same time. But we're not going to get that fancy. We're just going to go through here because we can always snap this to our surface later. And how we're going to do that, there's two ways we can do that. We can go over here and we can say uh, run the simulation with our collision volume and that'll snap it to our surface. Uh, alternatively, you can also go in here to subtool, project, and you can hit project all. And uh, we don't need to add the polypaint data, so we're going to hit no. And that'll go ahead and project your geometry uh, to your mesh. But again, what we're doing is we're going through here and we're kind of refining these edges so that when we go through and get our new geometry with Ziri Mesher, uh, it'll know exactly what we're going for. So now that we've kind of pulled these points around into the places that we want, let's go into Polyframe here, go into Solo, let's go here to Geometry. If these menus are getting a little bit long, you can go ahead and close them. Underneath the Ziri Mesher here, we have 35,000 active points. If you want to, you can dial in the exact target count you want in here. Just type in like five and enter, and that'll give you 5K polygons. Um, the adaptive size, the lower that number, the more even the quads it's gonna give you. The higher the number, the more it's gonna build in more geometry where uh, it feels like you need it. So if you have pre-existing wrinkles and you wanna keep those folds, I would say keep the adaptive size up, um, or you can you know turn it down a little bit if we don't have that much information we need to retain. Uh, target polygon count, probably five, or we can try half as well. Hit Ziri Mesher, and that'll go ahead and recalculate us new geometry. If you have X turned on, which remember again is transform, activate the symmetry on in the X axis, uh, it'll keep your geometry symmetrical as well. So that'll be new geometry. You can keep hitting Ziri Mesh half to go as low as you feel you need to. You can also hold down Alt and click Ziri Mesher to give you a new algorithm. Um, and if it looks pretty good, we can go in here and we can say, okay, Let's do geometry, dynamic subdivision. Uh, you can hit D to turn that on, and then shift D to turn it off. So we'll go ahead and hit D, and we'll turn up smooth subdiv up to two, and we'll turn off polyframe, see if there's any issues uh, with our geometry. Everything looks fine to me. So we'll go ahead and do, uh, we'll go ahead and keep smooth subdiv up to two. The thickness is up, and then we'll be out of solo mode, go out of perspective mode. We'll go ahead and rerun that simulation here. And part of the problem is, too, if we turn dynamic off, you're going to see we don't have a whole lot of geometry to work with. And that's okay if you want to get, like, nice big wrinkles through here. If you want to, like, hold down uh, Control and mask this middle part out, Control tap to blur that out, Control tap the object to blur it out, Control tap the document to invert that, hit W, and then go to B, T, Brush Transpose Cloth, which is C, B, T, C. And then now with the collision volume on, we can turn contract off. Uh, we can go through here and we can actually move scale and rotate these things out to get more or less uh, compression wrinkles in here. But you're gonna see uh, these wrinkles are pretty big. If we turn on dynamic and go ahead and we can hold down alt and pull this gizmo down, you're gonna see, again, these, these are pretty primary wrinkle form folds. Um, if we hit divide, that's gonna give us more more real geometry. So let's turn off dynamic and we have our uh, polyframe uh, open over here. Now if we hit divide with this unmask, it's only going to divide this local area. So if you do want more high res wrinkles in this just this one area, then feel free to do that. You don't have to put, you know, divide the entire uh, mesh. However, what I'm looking for is hold down control, unmask everything. Now when I hit divide, I'll have subdivision history. So I can go up and down in my subdivision history and get higher res wrinkles. So if I hit divide one more time or control D, um, that'll give me more geometry. So now if I unmask this area, and you're gonna see that mask is much sharper, I can control click to blur that out a little bit. And then we'll turn dynamic back on. This is gonna give us, on top of this three subdivisions, it's gonna give us two more extra ones. So we may need to you know, turn that down a little bit and just use our dynamic for our thickness maybe. So now as I go through here, you're gonna see I'm gonna get much, much uh, sharper wrinkles as I compress that. Of course, you don't have to use your gizmo to compress. If I hit Q, go back into brush mode, I can go in here to brush BC, brush cloth hook, or brush cloth pull, brush cloth slide. Let's try brush cloth nudge. And I can go through here and I can just nudge uh, wrinkles around as well. Now, of course, when you're doing wrinkles, you probably want to have X symmetry turned off. Uh, cloth doesn't tend to realistically simulate perfectly in the X axis, so you can turn that off uh, as needed. So you're gonna see if you don't want wrinkles this smooth or this small or this precise, um, you can go through here. You can smooth those out, or you can just drop down here subdivision level two. And the lower your subdivisions go, the more broad and the more like primary and secondary read uh, your brushes will will get. So we can go through here and we can just nudge uh, the clothing around to get that wrinkle read that we're looking for. And again, the lower you make that subdivision, we can go and unmask here, we can, the lower the geometry goes and then the more 
of a primary read you're going to get to that. And you can still go through here and you can preview. So you can just click this up to one and that'll give you a preview of what it would look like. We'll go ahead back to our matcap gray of what this would look like with bigger uh, wrinkles, but with a smooth subdivided mesh. You can also go back through here and you can hold down shift to smooth. You can go and isolate just a central portion. Again, control tap to kind of fade that border out, control tap on the object and then control tap in your document. You can also go in here and do like an expand in just the Y direction. Again, Y up and down. We're in the simulation and now you can expand the cloth in the middle to kind of get some of these wrinkles and then go back in here with your cloth brush Maybe go up here to Sojourn Level 2 and just start adding wrinkles in the direction you want. Now, the firmness of the uh, mesh, this number of iterations, all of that's going to play a role in how your cloth kind of reacts to your both your brush strokes and the simulation. And you can always go back in here and hold down Shift to Smooth, drop your subdivision down. You can smooth uh, broader shapes. Go ahead and if you want to like, you know, run the simulation again, with contract and the Z, that'll go ahead and snap it back to the body. You can also, you know, while we're up in subdivision level three and you're getting, uh, maybe you want to smooth this result out, go back to deformation, polish by features, and just crank that up a little bit and then I'll go through and run a little bit of a smooth operation on there.